Hey everyone, so this week it's all about the core. What is the core? <laughs> so they're the core it are the four essential muscles that I consider to be the most important for our spine. No. <laughs> so we've got on the front side, we've got what's called transversus abdominis, and on the back side, along the spine, on each side of what's called the spinous process, there's a deep muscle called multifidi. And then down at the bottom, we've got what's called the pelvic floor muscles. And up at the top is the diaphragm. They're supposed to contract when you're up against gravity. It doesn't, it's not like that visible, like, let's contract the biceps type of a um, muscular tissue. But it's just enough to be supportive for the spine. So anyway, so those are the four muscles that we want to activate when I say the core. Why that's so important is as we get older, Things get, um, things degenerate, especially our spine. And even those of you who have knee issues or the hip issues and even shoulder or the neck issues, if our core is weak where we're pooched out and we're slouched all day, and typical lifestyles today sort of promote that, right? Because everything's in sitting, everything is forward flexion, right? So we have this poor posture. If we're not sound in the core by holding us up, it's going to create a lot of strain and sprain in each of our joints, especially along the spine column. And so between the spine, each spine, there is the disc, right? Disc is supposed to be fluid filled to give each the, um, spine some room so that the nerves exit the spine. When you have neurogenic issues like numbness and tingling or you've got some severe chronic neck pains and such, that's a pretty sure indicator that you've got some um, spinal degeneration going on, but it can be fixed simply by strengthening your core, right? So let's say I have no core activation and I'm rounded all the time with a pooch, right? Abdominal pooch. When I try to move my neck, it's very limited. I want you guys to all try this, like in a very forward shoulder, like pooched out uh, posture. See if you can turn your neck. It's very limiting, right? Versus, and even the shoulders, it's very limiting to be able to lift, okay? But when you sit up nice and tall, activate the core, you've got full range of motion. There's so much freedom in the range of motion, so you don't want to lose that mobility. And we forget sometimes the foundation of our movement comes from the core. Look at my shoulders now. I have full range of motion. Not only that, when I do sit up nice and tall, utilizing my core function, it really allows room for my visceral muscles that give my abdominal cavity, all the organs in my abdominal cavity, especially my lungs under the rib cage, gets to expand and contract. And that's why I emphasize in yoga practice the breathing part of it, because that's one way we can detoxify. So as I talk about the movement functions, this is so important for you to really safeguard and really Maintain your mobility as you grow older, especially for us that live with a chronic uh, inflammatory condition like lupus. So knowing what they are, I'm going to ask you to lie on your backs and sort of um, let's experience what the activation of the core feels like and looks like. So on your back, this is called hook lying position. So I've got my pelvis, right? So when I inhale, I'm going to arch my back and really spread open my ribs. And as I exhale, I'm going to tighten down the rib cage and pull the abdominals so that the navel goes toward my spine, really tightening. When I palpate here, I can't feel under my ribs because it's so tight. My TA is tight. Right? So we just practice breathing like that. Inhale, as you can see, my pelvis tilts forward. As I exhale, everything goes out. Make sure though, you guys, that when you do the exhalation, that the shoulders don't come up, right? We don't want that unnecessary strain in the neck. So we wanna isolate the core, meaning the shoulders are away and relaxed from the ears and you maintain that the whole time. Inhale and exhale. And when you're here, really connect with your core. And if this is your first time, it's completely natural to feel like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing it right, right? But all you know is that there is this movement 
and there is this flattening effect. There's not a ballooning, like blowing up effect, but there's a really good flattening effect. It's like a corset from the inside, right? Inhale, we're using the physiology of breathing to recruit those re uh, uh, to recruit our core musculature by using our respiration or breathing because naturally that's what our bodies are designed to do it's just many of us walk around disconnected from our bodies we're so much in our thought right inhale and exhale And if you feel like you've breathed everything out, think again, breathe out some more, and then you'll feel the muscles kick in. And I can hold it there and really connect with my core. And inhale. And exhale. Don't allow the shoulders to pop up. Isolate the core. Inhale. And exhale. usually tell my patients to be very, very um, obvious uh, about uh, breathing, like almost breathe it out until you're, you feel like you're being obnoxious. And inhale and exhale. So once you get that, now keep your feet together. You're gonna spread your knees apart on the inhale, right? Same thing, now we're recruiting our leg muscles. And exhale back. Make it count, really feel your adductors. Inhale, arch your back. And exhale, close. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Really learn how it feels to move the limbs with core control, right? So this time I'm gonna use my arms. I'm gonna inhale, arch my back, bring my arms up overhead, and exhale, pull all the way down. <sighs> Using my core to bring my arms down. Good, with control. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, And exhale. And inhale. Last one, you guys. And exhale. There you go. I want you to focus on making your exhalation and inhale as slow and deliberate as much as possible and always focus on the core, right? Um, this time, I want your feet shoulder width apart. We're actually gonna do what's called a string of pearls. So we're gonna go ahead and arch your back. We're gonna exhale. We're gonna lift one, one spine up at a time, just pushing down, hollowing out my abs. 
We're going to come all the way here. We're going to inhale and exhale. And tailbone is the last thing to come down. Like keep your pelvis up, pelvis up, pelvis up. Really learn to lower one spine down at a time. As you inhale, exhale, you're going to peel up keeping the tension out of the neck and the shoulders, go all the way up. I call it the roll ups, right? Inhale and exhale. <sighs> From the top down. And inhale and exhale. Do this until you can be so graceful when you do them. Inhale and exhale. Really learn to get the navel to the spine, flattening and hollowing. Exhale, lift and peel your spine up, hollowing your abs all the way up, relaxing your shoulders. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale, tuck and scoop and lift one by one. Inhale and exhale. Nice and sl slow. Keep practicing that, you guys. That is so worth doing. So I'm going to bring my knees up to your, um, up to my chest and just stretch my hips out. And I'm going to roll over on my left side and sit nice and tall. So I hope that that was helpful, that you were able to find your core. There's a lot more extreme core activating techniques and exercises that are available to you. But oftentimes they bypass all the good stuff of the innermost core musculature and they start recruiting all the external stuff. It's sort of like really screwing the hinges of your door, um, hinges of the door to really make sure that your door functions by opening and closing as it shoots smoothly without losing the mobility. So please keep practicing this, perfect it until you can get it to be as graceful as possible and I promise you it'll be so worth your time. Until next time you guys, have a great weekend and I'll see you guys next week.